Shalom, everybody. Good to see you all. Hope everyone is doing well. And we still, we got a story here that really fits Bible prophecy of disease and pestilence. But I can tell you in all my years of being alive, I have never seen ticks travel heavily across the country like we see is going on right now. Uh, I can't say that I never dealt with ticks. Um, but back when I had my dog, when he was still living, we had like these little evergreen, little hedges, and they were evergreen. And every now and then he would go out there and rub up against it. And usually it was okay. He would just come back in the house smelling like evergreen. Well, one year, the ticks, I guess, were attracted to it. So every time he would rub up against it, he would come in the house with a tick. So we were dealing with ticks back then. But the guy that was taking care of my lawn, he knew exactly what to do to treat it. So he just treated the bush and that problem went away. But where these ticks are appearing, ladies and gentlemen, is mind blowing because they tend to be in wooded areas and, you know, uh, places where they can get onto a tree and, and stuff like that. Right. These things are showing up on beaches. Now that is the last place you should see a tick, but they're showing up on the beaches too, which is highly unusual. And no one knows why that is going on, but we know why. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Let me see if I can get this all set up. And these are the uh, deer ticks, ladies and gentlemen, the ones that carry Lyme disease. They're the ones that are traveling across the country. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You already know what I was going to ask you. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get started. All right. These ticks are dangerous because they carry the Lyme disease and they are spreading rapidly across the country. Now we know, you know, a lot of people are outdoors now, at least for now, I really truly believe America is going to lock down again. I really do. And people are outdoors enjoying the summer, but they're also getting ticks they're getting ticks. So here's where dangerous ticks are spreading across the U.S. and what to do about them. It's probably not the news you want to hear in the middle of a long-awaited summer. Dangerous ticks are spreading across the country. Whether this will be uh, especially tricky depends on where you live. So it really depends on where you live. So they also carry disease, you know, just like rodents do. These ticks carry disease too. And we know they suck blood and that's how they feed themselves, whether on humans or animals. And sometimes if they're not caught, they will actually burrow themselves in your skin. So you really got to be careful. Take the black long-legged tick, which can transmit bacteria that causes Lyme disease. In the past two decades, the number of U.S. counties with an established population has more than doubled. The Lone Star tick, a species implicated in the potentially fatal allergic reactions to red meat among other conditions, are also spreading. So this is one tick that's spreading, but the Lone Star tick is also spreading across the country. 
There's no single reason that explains why these bloodsuckers are on the move. But one fascinating culprit is an increasing uh, forest cover in the eastern U.S., which has helped uh, facilitate the spread of the white-tailed deer and other animals uh, that ticks love to feed on. It's, yeah, it really is. So reforestation, where things are growing back, and the only reason why that's happening, y'all, is because of that one-year lockdown when things were not being done. So, and no bug, oh, that's why these bugs are going out of control because there was no pest control during 2020. So they were able to explode in numbers and the tick is not an exception. Okay. More ticks means more tick-borne diseases, which have more than doubled since 2004. And there aren't just concerns about backcountry hikers. In fact, your risk of encountering a tick may be higher while you're gardening or walking your pets, which by the way, are the risk too, relative to outdoor recreation, according to one large 2019 survey in the Northeast. But, you know, if you go back probably like around June, either May or June, I did a story on uh, ticks being found on several California beaches. So they are literally everywhere. All right. The rise of dangerous ticks. There are hundreds of species of ticks worldwide and dozens in the U.S., but only some are known to transmit pathogens to humans. Typically, ticks aren't considered reservoirs for these pathogens. Instead, they pick them up when feeding on infected hosts, such as the white uh, foot mouse. Two types of ticks are especially worrisome in the U.S., the black long-legged tick and the lone star tick. Both carry harmful pathogens and appear to be creeping across the country. The black-legged, which I am familiar with only because, you know, like many states, we got so many deers here, and this is what these deers will have. They tend to have in the state of New Jersey, the long-legged uh, black tick and or deer, or they call it the deer tick, get the most attention from epidemiologists. And that's because they carry two types of bacteria that causes Lyme disease. The most common vector-borne disease in the U.S. and cause a number of unpleasant symptoms from fever to joint pain. Some can last for months. You know, I worked with a woman probably back in the early 2000s. She had Lyme disease. And one thing about her, I noticed she had to be out of work quite a bit because of her Lyme disease flaring up. So, I mean, even to this very day, there's no real cure for it. All right, uh, these ticks now broaden their range from the Eastern US and pretty much all directions. The CDC estimates that nearly half a million people now get Lyme disease in the US each year. And there have been a steady rise in reported cases in the past three decades. The expansion has epidemiologists worried. Tick-borne diseases already account for more than 75% of the vector-borne diseases in the U.S., according to the CDC and prevention. Making matters worse, the resources for tick surveillance and prevention are highly limited compared with 
what we spend on, uh, let's say for mosquito control. So let me just stop here. There is a map I want y'all to look at. Let's see. There is a map to show you where they are in the country. So let me see if I can pull this up. All right, let me share my screen. Uh, share my screen again. Okay, here's where they are in the country. So they're just showing you from 1996 to, two, to uh, 2020. And where you see the red, those are the states that are heavily impacted by it. And I'm in one of those states. But as you can see, they are moving across the country. They're like halfway across the country. And they're saying they're going to continue on. So do not be surprised if you'll see more and more deer ticks that you normally see on the East Coast that will start showing up on the West Coast. So this is what it looks like when you 2020. So you can see their spread has been going on for years, actually a few decades, they've been spreading more and more across the country. You know, for a long time, it was mainly the East Coast, but things are changing. Things are changing rapidly. You know, it's not, a, it's not, common to hear ticks on the move. <laughs> That's not common. You would think more of your airborne type bugs, you know, the ones that fly would be more on the move. Uh, you know, ticks, they're crawlers, you know, <laughs> they don't fly anywhere. So yeah, that that's wild that they are spreading like this across the country. But aren't we in these last days now? You know, disease and pestilence. But it just goes to show you that's another very um, biblical thing that's going on in the country. Another plague. Right, Mr. Lawrence. Pestilence is part of the plague. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, you know, a lot of people that go hiking um, tend to get ticks because, you know, they're walking a lot in wooded areas. So they will tend to get ticks. But now you don't even have to go to wooded areas. People are getting this just from just walking up and down their own street and come home and they're finding ticks on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, they do have products out there that will, um, especially if you start seeing ticks that you can put on your skin. And DEET is definitely one of those things that's been used for a couple of decades. In fact, I remember my son went on a field trip when he was in summer camp and they had recommended that we all, all parents get the, um, the lotion with DEET and so I had to go get him that to make sure he didn't pick up any ticks while he was out. Yeah, Florida is another area where you got a lot of uh, the ticks. So, I mean, so is that that's the case where I am. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just interesting to see how rapidly things are changing. But you notice they never got this economy off the ground the entire time the lockdown was lifted. They never got this place off the ground. You know, and well, they're just going to have to learn the hard way. Their time is up. They're going to have to learn the hard way. Mm 
Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, a lot of people live in wooded areas, you know, and see, we think that's what um, high IQ people do. But no, a lot of black people live in wooded areas, too. I have a couple of relatives. And when you go over their house, it's all surrounded in trees, front and back. They just got a lot of trees all around the house. I mean, a lot of people live that way, especially if you're in a rural area. It's very common. It's more common than uncommon for people to live in those kind of um, environments. <laughs> Jet Black, you're right. Well, maybe if they bathe with a towel and soap, you got that right. You know, I you just reminded me of something. I remember when we would watch those commercials where they would be in the shower trying to sell a soap, right? And they just be in the shower with the water running and rubbing a bar of soap all over their body. And I, I used to always ask my mom, where's the washcloth? Where's the washcloth? <laughs> that looks weird to me. But what's even weirder, y'all, I must have been a teenager. We had a park, and, and behind the park, there's a creek. And you can go back there. Some people take their boats back there and everything. Well, one time, we were in the park, me and another friend, we were in the park walking around, just taking a walk. And some high IQ dude was in the creek with a bar of soap, Get, taking a bath in the creek. <laughs> I mean, we were laughing. And, and he it was just like the commercial. He just had the bar of soap just rubbing it all over himself and taking a bath in the creek. And I was like, how the hell do you take a bath in a creek? <laughs> no, I said, Never mind. Never mind. But when you go down there, y'all, I think they got every tree you can imagine, including banana trees are around this creek. And I didn't even think there were banana trees in New Jersey until we used to walk along the creek. And I would look over and I was like, ain't that a banana tree? <laughs> yeah, there's banana trees and all kinds of trees back there. You know, it, it's just a part of the park they just didn't cut down, but they left the wooded area over on one side and it's everything over there. I, I, it was several banana trees in there. And I said, I didn't even know banana trees could survive in New Jersey, especially the winter, but apparently they do because those trees have been there for a long time. Yes. He was in Creek water taking a bath. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was that was during those times we did not have uh, you know camera phones, so I couldn't film that. But I would have caught that stuff. <laughs> would have caught it. <laughs> oh, I would have caught that if I had a camera phone. But we we weren't into that back then. We were still heavily using landlines back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You should have deer in your state, too. Um, Craig Killmonger 7. Deers are everywhere. There's, pro there's probably as many deers in America as there are people. It's a lot of them. And I, you know, during the day, you don't see them too much. But when nighttime comes and you're out there driving, you'll see a lot of deer. <laughs> I used to see a lot. In fact, I saw two red foxes in New Jersey. One time I was driving home from work. I had worked a little overtime and I was driving home from work and a red fox was walking along the highway. I think he came out of the woods and he was just walking along the shoulder of the road. And I'm looking, I'm like, what the hell? And then another time, my son and I, we were in the car together and it was sundown. The sun was going down 
and a fox ran right in front of the car. He just ran right across the road. So it's a lot of wildlife out there, boy. If you ain't out there driving around, especially at night, you probably not. You probably live most of your life and haven't seen anything, because you know a lot of them tend to stay away from humans. And we have both black and brown bear in New Jersey too. The black bears don't really bother you. When they see you, they just run the other way. They, they're pretty scared of people. But the brown bears, that's a whole different story. If you got a brown bear on your property, you may want to get a rifle. <laughs> Those suckers will fight you. It, it is a difference between the two. Yeah, if you're a trucker, I know you see a lot of stuff that the average person don't see, John L. I, I can imagine the stuff you've seen. We got coyotes in New Jersey, too. We got coyotes. In fact, um, it must have been in 2018 or 2017, one up in the northern part of New Jersey tried to attack a toddler that was just out playing in the yard and a coyote came along and, and um, almost took out that little toddler and it made the news. So I'm, I'm sure you could probably go and pull up the story. And that was here in New Jersey. Yeah, these are brown bears, uh, Richard Copeland, but they're not as big as grizzlies. They're not grizzly size. No, they're smaller. The ones that we got in New Jersey are smaller. They're not quite as big as a grizzly or that Kodiak bear. No, they're, they're nowhere near that size. Um, thank you, Cameron Charles, for the super chat. Lisa, about two years ago, I saw a pregnant deer just grazing. Yeah, you know, I've seen this one time um, we were out because my son for a short period of time had a newspaper route and we were out at night and it must have been eight lined up waiting to cross the road. And I never seen so many of them together, but it was that many. And it was some small ones. You could tell they were does and, 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 and it was one male and the rest of them were females. And there were some small fawns, little ones. And they were just waiting on the side of the road for the traffic to go by. And then they all ran together on the other side. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I never seen so many, <laughs> never seen so many. You know, there are mountain lions here in New Jersey. If you go out on YouTube, um, you'll see like somebody will say New Jersey cougar sighting. And they'll, they'll be in the woods walking around and they'll spot a cougar. That's not unusual. There are several videos out on YouTube showing uh, cougars in New Jersey. But those cougars were actually brought in. We did not have cougars initially. The cougars they brought in from Colorado to keep the deer population under control. And they did that, I think, like back in the late 80s. Uh, early 90s, somewhere around that time, they brought in a bunch of cougars and they let them go in different locations in New Jersey to keep the deer population under control. Yeah, uh, Lady D, if you're upstate New York, I know y'all see a lot of deer. Yeah. You know, my I have an uncle down in Atlanta, and he will uh, go hunting every year. In fact, one year he even asked me if I wanted a deer. You know, that just one deer will pack your entire freezer, and that's an animal you can eat. That's a clean animal. So you can eat a deer. And many, many people don't even know you can get a ham from a deer. If you want a ham from a clean animal... Just get a venison ham. They have them. And you'll that you know that way you're eating it from a clean animal. Delmonte green beans. I'm a trucker and I've seen hawks. You know what? I did too. One time a hawk 
landed on, um, we have this highway 295. It was chasing a squirrel and it, landed, it came down on the highway. And I remember watching, man, them, them birds are big. At least the one I saw, that thing was huge. Um, okay, so I am a trucker. I've seen hawks hunt on other birds in the air. Yep, I've seen that too. Chasing and cutting them off the birds in flight path. Foxes have a sight a feline mannerism. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine, like I said, truckers, y'all go everywhere. So I know you probably seen more than the average person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have falcons and we have hawks. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, a couple of times I opened my front door and walked out on the porch. And one time it was a turkey on my front porch and it freaked me out. That's a big ass bird. I don't know if any of you have experienced that, but it might have happened here about twice where I was going out the front door and there was a, a turkey on my front porch. Um, James H., thank you so much for the super sticker. And, and you got to be careful with turkeys because they that's another uh, animal that will fight you. So you, you have to be real careful if you encounter one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hawks will stay where there's a, a big food source, Del P. If there's a lot of food they're finding back there, they'll just stay there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they, they're fighting birds, Jasmine. <laughs> Turkeys are fighters. I know the one that was on my porch, it was all black. The last one I saw was all black. And those turkeys, those turkeys have always been around us. We just see them a little more now than before, but they've always been there. Yeah, they are mean birds, uh, Darlene X. You're right about that. They got a horrible temperament. I don't know if any of you have encountered a turkey. They got a terrible temperament. That's why so many of the uh, U.S. postal workers, you would think they're carrying pepper spray for the dogs. No, they're carrying that stuff for the turkeys. <laughs> That's what they're carrying up. They get, because the turkeys are they're getting in their way of delivering mail and they got to carry pepper spray just for the turkeys. Mm-hmm. A rooster, yeah. They, they. <laughs> I don't know why so many small birds or or fighters like that. You can just literally kill them, you know. <laughs> well, I, you know, I like I said, I've had two encounters with turkeys, and I've even driven down highways and would see turkeys walking along the side on the grassy part, uh, you know. And they're just walking around with each other. They don't really do nothing. Yeah, if raccoons are, yeah, I had a raccoon problem on my roof about a year ago. And that, well, man, I never want to see that again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wild peacocks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I saw somebody had posted a video and they, I, I think it was King Wage and he saw wild peacocks. Mm-hmm.
uh, Del Monte green beans. Uh, owls are amazing. Their flight is stealthy, no sound when they fly. So I'm so tired of being a truck driver, but it's an additive type of carrier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's one thing owls do. They keep the, the pest under control. If we didn't have the owls, you would be looking at something like Australia, where you're being overran by mice. That's one thing. They keep everything under control. They really do. I imagine sleeping, Brenda Hill, imagine sleeping and the skunk smell coming through <laughs> and skunk smell coming through your window that will make you jump straight out your bed. Yeah. You know what? You know what I, I read about skunks? Because one year we had one that kept coming back and kept coming back. It says if you got a skunk and the skunk won't leave and it just keeps coming back, that's a female. That's a female. If you got a skunk and maybe you smell it one night and then it goes away, a lot of times that's a male. A female will keep coming back to the same spot over and over and over. Unless something like a big dog scares it enough where it just will leave and go somewhere else. But I, I didn't know that until I started reading about them. And the only reason why I was reading about them is because we had one that kept hanging around. And I said, well, what is making it hang around here? <laughs> what is it about this place that's making them hang around? But yeah, females tend to hang around. Males will just pretty much move on. Mm-hmm. Well, Dwayne Williams, you know what? I used to, every now and then I used to have to go in at 4 a.m. because when I was um, an IT manager, I would have to meet with my night shift at least once a month so they could see me or if they had any issues that they needed to discuss with me. So when I got there one day at 4 a.m., there were bats literally sleeping on the building. It was, it had to be about four or five of them just on the building sleeping. And I'm like, oh my God. I mean, it was weird looking at that. Mm hmm. You go, oh, so the, the birds are flying at your dog. Yeah. If you had a bigger dog, they wouldn't be doing that. My dog was not big. He was probably, he was what you would consider small. He was about 25 pounds, but he was big enough where, you know, predatory birds didn't mess with him. Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. You got to have him dissented if you want to have a skunk. I, I, I never desired to have a skunk as a pet. I it just, nah. <laughs> No, I don't think so. Pepe Le Pew, a pet. You found one in your kitchen? Yeah. No, I never found one on the inside. But when I used to go to that building, it, they would be on that building, especially um, like at 4 a.m. just before sunrise, they would be sleeping on the building. You're right, Barbara Thompson. I believe uh, the U.S. will lock down again. I mean, look, parts of Europe is already talking about locking down and their people are in the streets protesting. So, yeah, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. You know, I mean, think about it. We're in the final days. They're not getting this economy back. I said this back in 2020. They are not getting and they don't have it back. They are struggling to get everything up and running. You, you got people that don't want to go to work. You got so many things that are not what they were back during the uh, 2019. And it's not going to go back to that level. We are done with that. That is in the rear view mirror. <laughs> we, we are done with that. That's not coming back.
Barbara, around here, you know what people do when they get them off of them? They burn them. That's what they do. They they just burn them. You know, eagles really are. Um, I, I don't know, Joel Ivory. I don't know if you know a lot about eagles. That's why I'm looking at America with this bald eagle as a symbol. That's a scavenger bird. It's a scavenger bird. It, it eats. It eats anything. It's a scavenger, and it's so damn pathetically lazy. What it will do is steal prey from other animals. But that's all that thing is. It's not, I mean, I could see if you picked a bird that, you know, a predatory bird, but the eagle is a scavenger. You know, it, it's a rat with wings, really, at the end of the day, that bird is a rat with wings, is what it is. And they're so lazy what they do is they'll see another bird carry and prey and it'll go into flight uh flight and fight the bird over the prey and steal it so that's really what the reputation is of a bald eagle stealing prey from other birds and animals but i guess i guess that's symbolic isn't it you steal a country and you got a stealing bird as your symbol <laughs> i guess it goes together don't it Yeah, I mean, it's not a, you know, they raise it up as a high-end bird, but it really isn't a high-end bird at all. It's a scavenger. But maybe it's me. I sure wouldn't have picked that animal as a mascot, but I guess that's why I'm not the one in charge, right? <laughs> I wouldn't have. I don't think I would have picked any scavenger animal like that. Mm-hmm. Shoot, I think a, a hawk is more on a higher end than an, a bald eagle. To be honest with you, I think a hawk is more of a, you know, it, it's a predatory bird, but it's not a scavenger. Yeah, I never liked crows. Even when I was a kid, I did not like, they, they would... You would think on trash day back in the day that it was dogs or maybe cats or something. It usually be them crows out there tearing open your uh, trash bag and eating from it. Um, Del Monte Green Beans, have y'all seen the vids of a brown eagle from Tibet? They'll throw goats off the side of the mountain. No, I, I think I don't think I've ever seen that. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, I, yeah, Derek. Um, I did hear about um, Biz Markey passing. Yeah, well, may he rest in power. He really wasn't that old. I think they said what he was fifty-seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we have hawks around here. I see the hawks all the time, actually. <clears throat> in fact, they are usually the first bird flying up in the air when I wake up in the morning. You can tell they're hunting because they got the, you, you can tell they got that long wingspan and they're always up in the air just circling around a certain area looking for some movement down on the ground so they can eat. But I see them all the time.
he had he had diabetes problem. Yeah, well, that's a, a very common thing among our people, unfortunately. Mm hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's not the message that our Heavenly Father want us to have is from rappers. Maybe he doesn't want us to have that message that they're, you know, out here giving. That's how you silence people. You kill them off. Yeah, vultures. Mm -hmm. You know, we got vultures here in New Jersey. <laughs> I kid you not. I didn't know until one day I actually got lost coming home and I was driving down this back road and the back road went into a dead end back then. And it was uh, at the end of the road was this big dead tree. And on this big dead tree were about, it had to be about five vultures. And I was like, I didn't even know vultures were in New Jersey. And I was like, and how did they get back here? But hold on, let me see if I can even get a picture of it. But yeah, that's how I stumbled across the vultures here. I, I had no idea vultures they even existed in this state. Let me see, because I, I saw, the, I've actually seen these vultures. Here they are. Let me see. Uh, yeah, here they are. Hold on, let me... Um, share my screen. I'll show you the ones in New Jersey. <clears throat> but yeah, we, I thought, uh, I, I didn't think vultures were outside of Africa, but apparently they are. <laughs> Here they are. New Jersey wildlife and they're eating a deer. So this, these are vultures. And that's how I found that I got lost one day and at the end of the road was a dead tree and it was about five vultures up in the tree and they look exactly like these vultures and i was like there's vultures in new jersey don't be fooled them suckers are big one of them was walking alongside my car and it went back up in the tree but it came the head of it came up to my door window that sucker was big Okay, <laughs> not little birds at all. They are big. But apparently there's vultures here too. So, I mean, it really depends on where you live. If you live in a certain part of New Jersey, you may not even see these. I don't think everybody see them anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it really depends on where you live is where you would see them. But I, I always thought they couldn't withstand the cold but apparently they can. Maybe it just depends on the species of the bird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tur uh, turkey vultures, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I know many of them around here, especially the hawks, they feed heavily on the squirrels. And they'll get rabbits too. Um, I've seen them dive down for a couple of the rabbits. So they'll they'll eat anything out there practically.
Mm-hmm. No, we can't eat a vulture. That's not a clean bird. You know, because they eat animal carcasses and everything. So, no, you, you can't really eat that kind of bird. Yeah, they'll eat anything dead. The homeless advocate, they'll eat anything dead. You know, it, even a, a human body, if it was out there, they'll eat that too. Yeah, I mean, it really is, is a, a practical thing. I mean, look at how many animals probably die out there in the wild, you know, that we just don't see because they're in wooded areas. So it's really their job is just cleaning everything up. That's really what they're doing. Yeah, a, a turkey is part of the vulture family. That is true, Danielle. It is part of, I mean, that's why when you look at their face, they look similar to a vulture. So it is part of that same family. It's raining in Las Vegas. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, I guess that's much needed. And I hope y'all don't flood. We had our 100 year flood in New Jersey a little over a week ago. Mm hmm. Right. And Shirley, Maxie, we don't eat owls either. But, you know, some people do eat them, but you're not supposed to eat them either. Mm hmm. Yeah, Germany. Oh, man, they got their behinds handed to them. I saw that flood over there. It's bad. And they said they're expecting to the uh, uh, death toll to go way up. Last time I looked, I think they said 114, but it's going to be way higher than that. They really had a bad flood. Yeah, the quail is a, a bird you can eat. That That's actually um, one that's in the Bible. You can eat quail. You can eat quail. I mean, all stores don't carry quail, but if you can find a, a place that sells it, you can have quail. That's a clean bird. I've had quail before. It's actually very good. I don't know if any of you have tried it, but it's it's actually very good. Yeah, a lot of places have been flooding lately. And then you got the triple digit weather that's going on in the Northwest and Canada. And um, there's going to be more people dying from those temperatures, unfortunately. Especially if you're in a location where you're not used to those triple digit temperatures. It's hard for people just like down in um, Texas, y'all. When they had that winter, I think they said 700 people died from that winter storm that hit Texas. And remember when they turned the lights out, uh, the power out on them folks and everything, 700 people died. You know, if you're not used to it, it can take you out real fast. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of people here, Danielle, that will eat any damn thing, too. They'll eat anything that's moving. It's actually very good. If you um, can, you know, you got to have maybe a store where you have a butcher. A lot of those places will tend to have quail, but just your average supermarket, they won't have it. No ocean sold. A duck is not a clean animal. <laughs> no, I know a lot of people that eat duck. Oh, 
I mean, look, you, we got the cicadas out here and technically you can eat those. I, I, I guess because I'm not accustomed to eating bugs, I just can't do it. Maybe I'll feel different if I'm in the kingdom, but here I just can't, I can't chew that chow down on grasshoppers and locusts and cicadas and stuff. I just can't do it. You know, maybe if I was raised in a different way, I would feel differently, but I, I still can't chow down on, I can't chow down on that. <laughs> I just can't, but I know technically we can eat them. Yeah, well, um, George, the George Macon experience. When I was little, down in Georgia, they were eating um, possums. They were eating possums, and what they do, they kill them, skin them, and what they do is put them in a pot and then put yams all around them and bake them in the oven. And they eat that if they can catch one. Usually, they can't catch them, but if they luck, if they I guess go outside and get lucky and grab one. That's what they did. They would eat possum. And a possum is nothing but a rodent. That's a that's a rodent. No, I mean, because look, it's so much vegetation outside. I would find something to eat. I would not have to eat an unclean animal. You know, I know a lot of people will ask, oh, if you were starving and there was nothing else around. Well, as long as there's vegetation outside, leaves and stuff like that, I'll make it. I'll make it. I don't have to eat a rodent. I don't think any of you got a stoop, not unless you just, you just got to have that meat. I, I don't have to have that meat. So if I got down to starving, it's enough vegetation outside, in my opinion, that I could eat. Why, instead of grabbing a rat, why not grab a dandelion? You can eat the root and everything. Grab a dandelion. They're everywhere. Some people take the root and they just clean it up real good and bake it and eat it. That's what I would do. I would do that before I go out there and grab a rat and eat it. No, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying I, I would do that first. Well, I, I'm not talking about grass. I'm, t I'm talking about the things out there that are edible. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know, you get dandelions and around in New Jersey, there's a lot of fruit trees. You know, I would grab the fruit. You can eat the fruit trees. You can, yeah, you can eat lavender flowers. There's a lot of things out there you can eat without resorting to eating a rat. <laughs> I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Crab apples, like I said, there's a lot of, especially this time of the year, you can get berries, fruit, vegetables. There's all kinds of things. You know, we even got um, wild asparagus and wild collards that are growing in New Jersey. That's why I'm saying I wouldn't resort to eating a rat. You can grab some wild collard leaves out here and eat those. I would eat those before I would eat a rat. Mm-hmm. Um, Del Monte green beans. When I was deployed to Iraq, they had camel spiders. Yeah, I saw those suckers as big as a car steering wheel. You know what? I saw the videos on that. Those suckers were big. I, I would be too afraid to be out there in the desert with something that big. 
Yes, Mr. Lawrence, you can have goat. You sure can have goat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I said, if you look outside, you'd be astonished what you can find. Mint grows wild in New Jersey, you know, and like I said, you got um, vegetables that grow wild in this state too. You can get some of that. <laughs> yeah, garlic leaves. You can even see the um, another thing that grows wild are the green onions. You can go in some yards and, and find green onions growing wild in the yard. Man, please. I, I, I would be fine. I would literally be fine. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, some people do eat elk. That's true. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see there, scallions growing in your neighbor's yard. That's why I'm saying, I don't know why everybody think if you're in a situation where you're starving, the only thing you need is a rat or some squirrel or something, that, that is just simply not true. Yes, Debo Rob, I do fast. Yes, I do. Well, it depends. Um, Fon Exa, LTD, triple zero seven. They do not. Now I know in my supermarket, they sell bread pudding, but I, I generally don't eat bread pudding, but I do see it in the supermarket here. <clears throat> I, I guess it, maybe it depends on where you go. Yeah, I believe that too, Mr. Lawrence. Trust me, we, is, it, the Israelites will survive without breaking the most high's laws. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and conclude. Thank you so much for being here. We'll definitely do this again real soon. I got several stories I want to go over anyway. So wherever you are, please stay safe and definitely watch, you know, what you do out in public because that Delta is spreading like crazy right now, everywhere. Shalom family. <laughs>